something else about dynamite. If you dug a hole and you put a stick of dynamite and you backed up and lit the fuse, I'd advise you to run. And I don't just mean like, oh, let, let me just back up and, and I'm going to go slow at, at, you know, my pace. Run. You want to do it quickly. When you think if somebody lit a fuse to dynamite, we need to move fast. Like as far, maybe to another state if you need to. Because that when that dynamite explodes, when that power is released, something has to give. Something has to break loose. Something has to give when power is released. So when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, something has to happen. When the power of God is released in you, you have to do something. You don't just go to the go to a church service or on a prayer call or or watching a live and you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then you just sit there. Something has to happen. We can't be ignorant to uncontrolled power because that's dangerous. What if I just ran up to you and I just threw a stick of dynamite in your car or I threw a stick of dynamite in your house in the, in the oven or, or I walked by you and put a stick of dynamite in your pocket? The outcome is not going to be beneficial or safe or good. Uncontrolled power is power that is useless. So think about electric lines that run to your house. If these lines just ran to your house, they would burn your house down. That's why we need circuit breakers to control the power that is flowing into our home. You control the power with a switch. Now power used with knowledge and wisdom is beneficial to everyone. And so it is with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is power that can be misused if you don't know anything about it. So we have the church being misunderstood by non-believers and by believers as we study the word of God. God shows us the Holy Spirit that he's here to help the church, that he's here to help fulfill the word of God here on earth. The Holy Spirit is not for some person to do some solo dance or show to get everybody and to show everybody just how spiritual you are. That is not what the Holy Spirit's for, for you to do some jig at the front of the church. The Holy Spirit is here to benefit the entire body of Christ. Some people like to stand up and say, well, I speak in tongues more than you and I'll prove it. I'll dance faster than you. I can jump over three benches higher than you. People go to church to compete over the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is of order. The Holy Spirit is not a spirit of confusion. He brings order. He brings healing. He brings deliverance. He gives us rivers of life, rivers of life, of love, of peace, of joy, of power. John 7 verses 37 through 39. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. He empowers us to witness to others about him. He teaches us and gives each of us gifts. Many people think about tongues or other languages when they think about the Holy Spirit, but he gives us many benefits and gifts. It's not just tongues. These are the gifts and he distributes them to each of us as he wills. It's not like, oh, I get to pick what gift I'm, I'm strong in. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit gives them as he wills and he doesn't just give one. He gives them all as they are needed. You might need to speak in tongues right then. You need to prophesy right then. You might need to work in the, in the gifts of healing right then. As he wills. And that's 1 Corinthians. You can study this in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. So I'm just going to go over the gifts of what, this, what the gifts look like. So word of wisdom is a divine answer or solution to a particular event. A word of knowledge, to know something specific without having 
learned it by natural means. Faith. A supernatural impartation of belief and confidence for a specific situation. Gifts of healing. Supernatural endowments of divine health. Workings of miracles. Divine intervention that alters our natural circumstances. Prophecies. A message of encouragement from God through a person. Discerning of spirits. To be made aware of the presence of a demonic spirit. This gift is strengthened when we stop medicating it. Different types of tongues. A message from God in a language unknown to a person through whom the message comes. Interpretation of tongues. Understanding and expressing thought or intent of a message in tongues. He's a helper. The helper is a word Parakletos in Greek, and it means intercessor, consoler, advocate, one who pleads another's case before a judge, a pleader, a counsel of defense, a legal assistant, comforter. He abides in us. Ezekiel 36 verses 26 through 27. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. He dwells in us. He shows us and leads us to all truth. John 16 verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He teaches us all things. He always testifies and points us back to Jesus. John 14 verse 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all the things I said to you. Think about this. If you're a teacher, nothing can be worse than a classroom full of students that don't want to learn. We listen to people more than we listen to him. We listen to others' opinions. You've listened to a pastor more than you've listened to the Holy Spirit. We seek other people's advice more than we seek his. You have someone living on the inside of you. Someone. Example, when you ignore a person, they stop talking to you. The more you ignore them, the more they ignore you. And if you don't talk to me, I must not be that important to you. So if you keep ignoring the Holy Spirit, he will stop talking. He brings us back to remembrance of the word, of what Jesus spoke. He gives us revelation of God's word. He reveals the source of the emotions that you're feeling. Whether it be fear, a bad report, or, or a good report from God, you don't ever want the Holy Spirit to stop convicting you because if he does, you are in a really bad spot. Conviction is when the Holy Spirit tells you something that you're doing wrong, that needs to change. Do not ignore him. Romans 1 verse 24. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness in their lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Romans 1 verse 26. For this reason God gave them up to their vile passions for even their women exchanged in natural use for what is against nature. Romans 1 verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. The Holy Spirit is the bringer. Jesus is the cleanser and God is the forgiver. So you come to the Spirit with all your sin and he takes it. And he brings you to Jesus, where Jesus washes away all of your sin with his blood. Then you are taken to the Father and you're forgiven. 
So I want you to meditate this week on all that we went over a whole lot of scripture. Read Acts 2, go back through the scripture that we went over. And if you're ignoring the Holy Spirit, I encourage you to repent. Ask the Holy Spirit to read these scriptures with you and ask for a fresh refilling from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Repent for where you've missed it. Repent for where you've ignored him, for where you have listened to others' opinions instead of his, for where you've wanted to be taught by others and not by him, for where you have viewed him in the wrong way, that you viewed him as a mist or some mystical, spooky thing. Repent for those. Receive a fresh refilling today and meditate on these scriptures of who the Holy Spirit really is.